is going on? Sean here with Rendered Reality, and welcome to this week's Espresso Shot of VR Goodness. We are inching so close to October 13th, which we all know is the release date of the Oculus Quest 2. It's so close, I can almost taste it. Canon has been working on AR VR devices for years now, with multiple different iterations of their ideas put into physical concept. They have now announced the MReal S1 headset, their smallest and lightest device in MReal history. There will be two different styles to choose from, a head-mounted style HMD that is effective for work verification using both hands, and a handheld style that is effective for easy experiences at exhibitions. This device is focused at enterprise and does require tethering to a PC, no word on price or availability yet, but it is supposed to be more affordable than their earlier devices. A virtual reality version of the 2019 Blair Witch game is coming to the Oculus Quest on October 29th. Its new features take full advantage of VR controllers, giving players more ways to interact with the world. And by the world, they are putting heavy emphasis on your dog, the game's friendly canine companion, Bullet. This game is set in the same world as the cult 1999 film. Horror games in VR are ridiculously scary compared to any kind of horror film. Warning. Disclaimer, developers not responsible for sudden urination due to being scared senses while inside a VR horror game. Yeah, VR horror is that intense. Don't ask me how I know. The NDA has finally been lifted from Population 1, and it's the game everyone is talking about. They have been running closed beta tests for a long time now, and honestly, the game is a ton of fun, and really has the potential to be a big hit. Set for an October 22nd release date and a price of $29.99, unfortunately, the game will not feature cross-buy between Rift and Quest, but the game plays great on Quest, and there's really not much difference between playing on the Rift or the Quest. For me personally, I would recommend going for the Quest version if you're torn between the two. Having no wire is a big benefit for this game, because you are going to be moving around a lot. We are starting to see a lot of games that are being updated to take full advantage of the more powerful hardware in the Quest 2 headset, such as Arizona Sunshine, Super Hot, Waltz of the Wizard, Real VR Fishing, and others. Are you sticking with the Quest 1 or picking up a Quest 2? We have yet another VR treadmill that has been announced, but this time it is targeted for consumer level home use. This one is not technically a treadmill since you wear special shoes that are designed to slip along the surface of the round dish shaped base. The Omni One will be sold as a complete entertainment unit, including a standalone VR headset. Everything you need will be included in the box, no additional equipment required. Even including a standalone VR headset, the company states they haven't decided which headset that will be yet. The Omni One will also feature a game store with over 30 titles at launch, including Call of Duty and Fortnite style games developed by Virtuix alongside top titles licensed from third parties. The price is going to be $1,995 for the entire unit with a headset. They also plan to do a $55 a month payment plan option, and there will also be a dev kit option for $995, which does not include a headset. It will connect to a PC for either development or PC VR content. As much as I would love to have one of these things in the VR room, I have a hard time seeing these really catching on for home use. They still seem too bulky and pricey to me. Awesome for VR arcades though, and I think someday there will be a good home based solution. It's just too early right now. A company called Zapbox is running a Kickstarter for an affordable mixed reality solution using your phone. The launch of Zapbox Kickstarter aims to raise $65,000 to make this 6 degree of freedom MR device a reality. In a press release statement, Zapbox is saying an almost uninterrupted peripheral view of the real world that naturally blends into the immersive content displayed in front of the user in 3D. The mixed reality setup allows for fully opaque content and true blacks, while the open glasses style design means you can use your peripheral vision to stay connected to the real world. In addition to the headset, a pair of 6 degree of freedom controllers are included to provide an interactive element. If you want to back this and get yourself a Zapbox, you'll need to go for the $40 tier. Zapbox is going to be compatible with all iPhones from iPhone 6S and newer, as well as Samsung S series and Google Pixel. Keep an eye out for a game called Agency that has been pitched to Oculus for the Oculus Quest, from the studio behind the upcoming PC VR title, Lo-Fi. This will be a completely different game, but set in the same cyberpunk style world of Lo-Fi. The tech demo is already packing impressive visuals running on the OG Quest. I am really hoping this one makes it to the official Oculus Quest store. And there you have it, this week's highly caffeinated shot of VR Espresso. Hopefully we see you back here next week, and make sure you don't miss our weekend live show, Coffee and VR, where we dive much deeper into all these topics. Catch you all later.